Hey guys, update video time. So there's a lot been going on with my website and I thought it'd be a good time to show you guys what I've been up to. Now there's a lot of moving parts, so be patient. Okay, so here's my website. Now you can see it's very clean, basic, minimalistic, and what's most important here is the architecture. Now every part of this website is served by 16 megabyte Nginx tiny web containers. So every part of the site, such as the header, the footer and the body is separated and can be deployed separately without deploying the whole thing. For example, I can change this one video URL without redeploying the entire website and I can just deploy this one component. Now one microservice is responsible for loading up the frame and it sits behind a cloud native edge router. Now this is my website architecture. You can see the traffic comes from the internet to the edge router and the edge router is the only one that receives internet traffic and it's responsible to send the appropriate packets to the right microservice. In our case um, here it goes from the internet to the frame service and then the frame service fans out into multiple microservices which then retrieves the content and it all renders up in the frame service before it sends it back to the client. Traffic is our edge router. It's a modern cloud native load balancer that is Kubernetes and container aware making it quite attractive. Now you can see here um, it monitors routing rules that we can define per microservice and it'll update and hot reload its own config almost instantly without downtime which is super dope you can have traffic coming from multiple domains and then route them internally to different microservices off the back so what we're doing here is we're basically stating that all traffic coming into this domain if you look at here from the internet will be routed and the way we do that is we have this rule every microservice in our case our frame service has a rule to say it opts in on this domain and the traffic any traffic coming from this domain needs to go to this microservice now the cool thing is we never have to touch our edge router um, we never have to configure it when we submit these rules to the kubernetes api um, the router basically sits and listens to any of these rules coming in and it'll automatically um, obey these rules and, and hot load its own configuration so we'd never have to touch that um, that load balancer service and every microservice here can basically opt in whether they want or not um, to receive traffic from the internet so all our microservices are technically private except for this one which um, is exposed through the load balancer <laughs> Now Kubernetes also allows us to define network policies so we can state which containers are allowed to receive traffic from other containers. So in our case we could define a network policy to say the header, the content and the footer can only receive packets from the frame service and from no other service. This is kind of cool because um, from a security point of view if any of our services get breached the attacker can only make network calls um, to certain containers and not all over the place the other cool thing about this load balancer is that it natively integrates with the cloud native monitoring stack so if we look at this config file and we enable this metrics endpoint automatically our load balancer will start giving metrics out so you can see all these metrics and this allows any external services or within the environment to go and access these metrics so we can start visualizing um, the traffic patterns across our website. Now Prometheus is an open source monitoring tool and it's also Kubernetes and um, container aware and can monitor almost anything. You can monitor things in cloud, things on-prem, um, old legacy applications. It is it is very powerful and has many integrations as well. You can see um, we have this metrics from our load balancer and our Prometheus config that we have here has some scraping rules. You can define a job called Prometheus in our case and we have a static config and we're pointing the target to our um, cloud load balancer we can then see here that we have a target um, when we specify uh, we would give this config to to Prometheus 
um, it'll go and load it up and start scraping that endpoint automatically for us. Now there's this awesome tool called Grafana and Grafana is a visualization tool for metrics. It um, has the ability to to visualize a lot of different integrations and one of them is Prometheus. So in our case here, the community has built a dashboard for traffic. So I've gone onto Grafana's website and I pulled this um, traffic dashboard and I loaded up inside my Grafana. We can see here, um, it gives us quite a lot of insight to the traffic patterns in my environment. I can see I have two backends because I'm running two copies of my frame service. And over here, I can see the, you know, the get status 404, there's one 404 there, um, and the number of get requests. I can see my response times and yeah, a bunch of other things, different status codes and different um, protocols being accessed um, through this load balancer. I can also see a number of other backends. So because I'm exposing Grafana and Prometheus, I can see traffic um, and that's the traffic that I'm basically generating by being on this dashboard. I can see that and I can also see Prometheus um, and the response time for everything. This is uh, very cool. Now our load balancer um, traffic also has its own dashboard. We can see here because I have a routing rule for this DNS, um, which is my website, it shows up here in the front end and you can see it has um, a back end with two containers because we're running two copies of that frame service. And for demo purposes here, I've added routing rules for Grafana and Prometheus as well. So I'm exposing those backends. Now, every website out there is pretty much a grid. Um, every website, if you look at it, it's pretty much just tables, rows, columns, and they're overlaid with each other. And, you know, and it's just the way it is. So back in the, in the old HTML days, we used to build website using HTML tables, uh, which were quite messy and they were hard to style because they're just static rows and columns and um, you were bound by that. You couldn't overlay um, them and do all sorts of fancy things. So then um, divs became popular because you, you're able to float the divs on top of each other and you're able to overlay them, but it requires quite a lot of effort to get right. And that's where like style sheets come in and things like that. Now for my front end, I'm basically using HTML, but I'm using Bootstrap. Now Bootstrap is awesome because in my mind, um, you can define your entire site using grids and it will figure out how to render um, the, you know, and float the divs for you. So it does all that magic and it takes a lot out of the styling overhead so you can just be more productive. Now there's quite a lot of large bootstrap um, community and on GitHub I found this one that has a basically free open source um, bootstrap theme that you can look at. And if you run a live preview of it, you look at the source code, you can see how simple it is. I mean, this is a navigation, a page header. They show you content and samples of how to float all the divs and they show you a footer example. And there's no real like JavaScript frameworks that you need to figure out. You can start with something really simple as this and it's completely free as well. Thanks guys for watching, um, feel free to check out that GitHub repo and leave a like, subscribe, comment down below and let me know what you want me to, uh, what topics you want me to cover in the future and peace.